Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. Today is another thrift to treasure video where I take things that I've thrifted, found at uh, garage sales, or sometimes just given to me, and I turn it into something that is more my style. So it is rainy and yucky this week. It's been raining for two days already. It's supposed to be like this for the rest of the week. So I try to find things that I could do indoors. I don't have to like bring out and paint. So I got some good stuff though. It's gonna be exciting. Really kind of easy flips on this one. So first we're gonna start off with this bark. This is Cypress Bark and the guy that I buy my Cypress from, he just gives me this stuff because they throw it away. So he's super sweet and I always bring stuff to give to his wife and he always hooks me up. So we're gonna take that and these books and do something really cute. You can probably kind of figure it out, but I'll show you how to do it. And then, y'all, I saw these at Walmart. Now my garland, I like to get from Hobby Lobby, but my sprigs of greenery, I like from Walmart because I find their prices are great. So olive trees are super popular right now, but you can just go ahead and Google olive tree decor and see how expensive these things are. So for $3 for this little sprig, I was like, okay, we can do some with this. And also you can just buy these and put them anywhere but we're gonna make like standalone decor. So we're gonna take some olive branches from Walmart and some glasses I got, I think I got them from Goodwill. I mean, you can find this stuff anywhere. I want to get different sizes and see how they turned out. So we're gonna turn this into something really cute. Let me put this on the ground so I don't break it. Um, and then you might remember this from one of my thrift hauls. So I need to go ahead and get this done. This is something I can do inside. The top is really messed up. So although, although I really like the color, we're going to kind of paint it up and make it look a little bit more cute. So that'll be a project. And this is actually purchased already for somebody. So she picked out how she wants me to fix it up. And she's picking it up this week. So I got to get it done. So we're going to paint this cute little bench and distress it, bring back some of this beautiful wood. And then she picked out the fabric she wanted on here. So we're gonna go ahead and reupholster that. Now, when I'm picking up stools, I do always check the bottom and make sure that they can easily, easily be taken apart um, to be recovered. So let's go ahead and get started. I got this floral foam from Walmart. It was in the floral section right next to the sprigs of olive branches. I'm going to cut down the olive branches. I want it to be much, much shorter, not quite as tall. And then I'm going to cut off the two lowest branches. Once I cut them off, I'm going to stick the tallest one into the foam. And then I want to make sure it's kind of even. Then I want to fill up the rest of the cup with the foam. So that way it doesn't move. So first I want to get that first piece in, get it all centered, and then stick the rest in so it stays exactly where I want it to be. Now it's definitely good to pick a glass that's a little bit heavy. That way it doesn't topple over. If you use something plastic or something too light, the height of the branches would definitely make it fall over. These are wires, so you can kind of move them how you want them to be. Okay, hopefully this is a better angle for y'all to see. I realized that the last angle is kind of hard to see what I was doing. The next step is personal preference. I decided to use a little bit of burlap and some drop cloth. And then you definitely want to have a rubber band handy. This will make it so much easier. So once you kind of got it scrunched up around the top, you put the rubber band on, then you can kind of play with it and see how you want it to be. Then I'm going to use twine. I love wrapping stuff in twine. It just gives it such a cute little touch. Um, you're just going to wrap it around a few times and then tie it in a little bow. And then I thought it was like a little bit bulky. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some of the extra off to make it less bulky. Now, different stores have different drop, drop cloth. So this drop cloth is from... Um, Home Depot and I find it's a little bit thicker. I prefer the drop cloth from Harbor Freight.
This is a drop cloth from Harbor Freight. It is softer and I find the edges unravel a little more. That's just more my style. And then the one from Home Depot is just a little bit more structured. If you actually want a drop cloth to use a painting, I would definitely suggest the one from Home Depot. And I prefer the one from Harbor Freight for home decor. Next, we're gonna reupholster the little stool. Oh my God, y'all, this one was my favorite. I cannot wait for y'all to see the final result. It came out so good. But first, we need to take off all the old upholstery. I was kind of worried that the foam padding was falling apart, but whatever like fell off, fell off already, and the rest was in good shape, so I just left it. Good thing, because I really didn't have any other padding to put on it, and it was just the perfect amount. It wasn't too much, and it wasn't too little. You just want to pull off the old upholstery and make sure you pull out all the staples as well. I really like the cross stitching that's on here, so I'm definitely going to keep that and use it for a project at a later date. Okay, so I put a piece of drop cloth on it already and attached it on there with a few staples just to keep the foam in place. I'm going to be using this table runner that I've been holding on to forever. It is gorgeous and I actually love the underneath better. Now, I did give my customer options, but I also kind of hinted her in the correct direction because I really wanted to use this piece of fabric and the underneath. It is so beautiful. I'm using my fabric scissors to cut this. If you do not have fabric scissors, I highly recommend it. It makes it so much easier to cut not only fabric, but string, ribbon, any of that kind of stuff. I'm using my favorite staple gun. It is made by Arrow. It's the Arrow brand and it doesn't hurt your hands. It is really easy to use. And then I want to, since it has a stripe, I definitely want to make sure that I get the stripe right down the middle. So I'm going to make the stripe side tight. Make sure those are tight and staple those first and see how it looks. And then the other sides, I'm gonna be more loose with it because if I pull on it too much, it's gonna make that stripe kind of zigzaggy. You know what I mean? So you wanna kind of staple it and keep checking it and make sure it's good before you put all the staples in there and then have to redo it. The corners, I do them differently just depending on what type of fabric and what type of piece I'm using. But you just want to try to make the corners as flat as possible, even if you have to cut off some of, oh, y'all can't even see my hats in the way. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, you basically want to make your corners as flat as possible so that they're not like all crinkly on the edges. This one, I just kind of tucked it in and then pulled it over and then cut off the extra fabric. And then you just want to staple, staple it down really well. Oh my God, it looks so good. All right, last step is to put in the screws. Now I already painted it white and distressed it. Y'all seen me do that a hundred times and I'll probably record it on some other videos, but I didn't record it on this one. So I sprayed it with my white chalk paint and then I distressed it with a sander. Make sure you don't lose your screws when you take the top of your piece off, just put them to the side and then you just stick them right back in when you're done. I'm going to be using paperback books. I already took off the binder on the book and I'm using hot glue. My favorite brand of hot glue is the Gorilla Glue Sticks. I believe I have a link in the description. I just ordered them on Amazon and I've already cut down the bark. I used my saw, but they're thin enough. You could totally get some heavy doozy, duty scissors and just cut the bark. And I just cut it to the size of the book. 
and you glue it on then you get your string this is the string that i love from the dollar tree in the hardware section it comes in a pack of three you wrap it around a few times and then tie it up and then you're going to add a little bit of greenery that just gives it that extra touch of cuteness and then you're good to go you're ready to put it in your foyer your entryway like this is something you can definitely put anywhere in the house and then you can change it up for the holidays you could add some stuff on top for the different seasons We're going to be painting the top of this picnic basket with chalk paint. I'm just using a towel to put under it so it doesn't get on the bottom of the basket because I just want to paint the top. I'm using chalk paint. I use Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Um, it only comes in the quart, but what I do is I buy the color white and then I also buy an off-white. The white is too white and the off-white is too off-white. So what I do is I mix them together to get the perfect shade of white that I like. I'm just using a brush to put it on because that is just easier than spraying it and getting it everywhere since I am not painting the whole piece. You can see how one coat is going on really well. It's only going to take two coats of paint to cover this up. Okay, I thought it, it would be cute to add a little sign that says picnic. So I cut out a piece of wood, I painted it the same color as the top, and then I went on my computer, I printed out the word picnic to so the perfect size. I thought a cute script font would look great. I'm using my transfer paper to transfer the word, well the outline of the words onto the piece of wood, and then I'm going to use my paint pen to then trace it onto the wood permanently. This is a fine tip paint pen from Walmart. I actually just ordered some more because you can see I'm kind of struggling. It's running out of paint, so I need some more of them. And I will put the link to that as well in the description. To attach it to the picnic basket, I am just adding a piece of string on each side. I already put a hole in it, and then that's how I'll attach it to the picnic basket. Okay, this is a perfect example of why I distress pieces. So you see the difference between the top and the bottom is just like drastically different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sanding block and just distress back some of that wood. And then the piece will be more cohesive because you have some of that natural wood coming through the white and it'll match the natural wood you have on the bottom. I love distressing stuff and then if it gets a nick or a scratch, you know, it just adds to the piece. Give this video a big